So a really quite major ninth edition mechanic has been revealed in full today. Let's have a talk about strategic reserves and how it might apply to your army. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy Focus 40k channel where we've been covering the 9th edition news and developments as they've come out. Now strategic reserves was a rule that we knew was coming. Basically in some way we'd be able to spend command points to put a certain amount of units off the board and then bring them in to get an alpha strike on the enemy. A lot of factions and certain units already have abilities to come in from reserves in some way, but now basically if you want to you can use it on every single unit in the game. This one's very much harkening back to previous editions of 40k, where you could put things in reserve if you needed to, and now that option is very much valid once more. In this video we'll talk about exactly how it's going to work and how I think it might most impact on the game. So first and most importantly, the command point cost for strategic reserves is going to be tied to power level rather than either points or number of units. Basically you add up all the power levels of the units that you want to put in strategic reserve, then you consult the chart on the right to see how many command points that will cost you. So say reserving something like two Imperial Guard infantry squads will only cost you one command point, whereas a unit of six aggressors will be ten power level, so will cost you two. There aren't any restrictions as to what sort of units you can put into strategic reserves like this. It can be aircraft, it can be titanics and it could be lots and lots of little units, which you'd usually have to pay quite a lot of command points for by most armies deep strike mechanics. In particular, I really quite like this system because it means that you're not punished by putting multiple small units into reserve. Say if you wanted to have a couple of Imperial Guard squads and a character in reserve at the same time, that's not going to cost you three individual command points for three units, so I think in general it does scale quite well. I know power level isn't exactly the perfect system, but it's at least broadly representative, and for ease of play I could see why they went for this over points. Adding up the exact points values of multiple units in your army would certainly take a little bit longer and more effort when you're actually trying to work out how many things you can put in reserve for a certain amount of command points. As for this rule at the moment, we haven't seen any obvious things that say that you can only put half of your army into strategic reserves, but to be honest I would not be surprised if this comes out in the main 9th edition book. That's one restriction that we're going to have to wait and see if it still applies or not. I honestly suspect that it probably will, otherwise we might be back to the situation where we see people taking large amounts of their armies off the board to get a better alpha strike. I guess at least this way, if you want to do that, it is going to cost you command points, so other options in the game. In terms of when we can use the reserves, you can't bring them in turn 1 just like now, you can only bring them in on rounds 2 or later, and at least from this list, unlike the current system, there doesn't seem to be any limitation on how late in the game you can bring them in. It appears that you could bring them in on the very last battle round if you want to, but again that might be something that we have to double check when the actual ninth rulebook comes out. If you bring them in in battle round 2, you can set them up 6 inches of any board edge that isn't in your opponent's deployment zone. I think this feels about the right sort of balance, it does mean that you can get units round the flanks on turn 2, but you can't set them up right in the rear of the enemy's army. If you want to do that, you'll have to wait till battle round 3 or later. In terms of limitations, just like now, you can't set them up anywhere within 9 inches of the enemy, besides if you set them up on your own board edge, which we'll come on to. The limitation of arriving within 6 inches of the board edge might prove a little bit problematic for certain truly enormous units, such as the massive forge world things that you can get. I sort of wonder how it might work with models that are physically bigger than 6 inches in all directions. Just like before, you can't make any normal moves, advances or fallbacks once you've already come onto the board. You count as having moved once you've come onto the board, and if you haven't set any up by the end of the game, then they count as being destroyed. In terms of another few clarifications that they mentioned in the free text of the Warhammer Community article, aircraft will have a fair bit more freedom as to where they set up. They can be set up anywhere that's 9 inches away from enemies and facing in any direction. I guess this represents the enormous move characteristic that aircraft have, and also the fact that strategic reserves might not be as good a choice of aircraft, at least for the most part, as most of them can start right up at the back of the board, out of range of most weapons, and still get to make their impact felt on turn 2. Aircraft can fly off the board, as we've already seen, and enter strategic reserves voluntarily, and this one won't cost command points, and they have mentioned that they've fixed things such as fire and fade for Eldar, which had some silly situations where Eldar planes could both shoot and then fly off the board in the same turn, meaning that you couldn't ever fight them. I'm glad we're not returning to the piranha wing type situations that we had in 7th. Furthermore, again in the free text, so they haven't entirely told us how it works, but basically if you set up your own models within 1 inches of your own board edge, which I suspect will be any edge that's within your deployment zone, but I guess we'll have to wait and see, that means you can completely break the rule of setting up within 9 inches of the enemy, and if the enemy units are really close to your board edge, then it means you could actually start in combat with them, and you actually count as making a charge if you do that. It means that if you do have any scary melee units in reserve, then the enemy will certainly be thinking about not staying too close to your board edge, as that could essentially give you a free charge. Charge. To be honest, I'd be surprised if it comes up quite that often, but it certainly could disincentivize the opponent from jumping straight into your deployment zone with valuable units. 
Again, another rule that I would like to see clarified is whether or not any of the move again type abilities can be used the same turn after reserving. Things like warp time, for example, for Chaos Space Marines. At the moment, you can't use those type of abilities after arriving from reserve, so I would hope they do clarify that when we see the full text. So what does this mean in terms of impact on the game then? Firstly, I'd like to say that two command points does seem like you could buy an awful lot of units the reserve special rule, as it's going to be essentially equating to round about 400 points of models. It does mean that it is going to be a fairly expensive strategy if you do want to do it for any enormous units, such as keeping a huge unit of Centurion devastated off the board, or bringing in an Imperial Knight turn 2 to get the Alpha Strike. A Knight Crusader, for example, is 25 power level, so it would cost you three command points. I think for the most part, I could see it being best value on quite cheap units that aren't really all that durable, but hit very high hard and will really profit from getting the jump on the enemy rather than the other way around. And certainly bear in mind that the mechanic isn't free, it is going to eat into your command points pool and it will cost you other abilities in game, but I think it would absolutely be worth it on certain powerful units. First of all, it could be used to prevent Alpha Strikes on key assets, or potentially be able to get the Alpha Strike on the enemy yourself. In the live stream today, they mentioned the Tried and Trusted example, where they used a Shadow Sword against an Imperial Knight, saying that the first one of those that gets to shoot is really quite likely to get the upper hand, so it could well be worth it to keep the command points available, to hide it off the board, and make sure that your super heavy unit gets the first strike. It could also potentially be good for fragile shooting platforms, maybe things like Orc War Buggies or Dark Eldar Ravagers perhaps, that against some armies might really quickly melt away to enemy firepower, but if they do get to fire at max firepower at least once, then it's going to give you a decent advantage. Of course, you can combine this with all the other usual tricks to prevent Alpha Strike from destroying your army, such as hiding things behind terrain, using prepared positions, or deploying far back to outrange the enemy. I think potentially another one of the most powerful uses for this is getting a deep strike type mechanic for armies that don't typically have it. We've seen things like Raven Guard Assault Centurions or Aggressors dominating competitive play, and while this doesn't give you quite as free deep strike as their ability does, it does at least give you the option of starting with these powerful units off the board and appearing guaranteed within 9 inches of at least one enemy unit, I guess provided the entire enemy army hasn't run to the centre of the board or something. I think an army like Salamanders are a particularly good example for this. They have a lot of raw strength and can certainly bring the pain at close quarters, with their powerful buffs to melter and flame weapons, but they're kind of hampered by not being able to get their units exactly where they need to be. Just as an example, say Salamanders or Ultramarine Aggressors, they both have abilities that allow them to fire as if their aggressors remain stationary. This could be incredibly powerful when combined with being able to start off the board. You could potentially have Ultramarine's Aggressors jumping onto the board and raining a hundred odd shots down on you, or maybe even Salamander's successor Flamestorm Aggressors dousing you with double shooting Flamestorm Gauntlets, burning you within 11 inch range at minus 1 AP and plus 1 to wound. A very scary thought indeed. That is only one example though, any armies that couldn't reserve certain big scary units like this now have the ability to, and I think it might give a new lease of life into some units. It could also be very solid for delivering things that want to be in close combat, but are a little bit fragile, as a different way of delivering them compared with buying them a transport or foot slogging them across the board. Things like Sisters of Battle, Penitent Engines or Sisters Repentia certainly come to mind. The vast majority of armies can now get a bonus to their charge, or be able to re-roll their charge in some way, so there's a pretty reasonable chance of them making a charge when they come in from the flanks. They have clarified that all the other reserve type stratagems aren't going away for their individual codexes. A lot of them will be more powerful, either just allowing you to set up anywhere on the board, or perhaps having a better command point ratio, just say if you want to pay one command point to put a really big unit in reserve, compared with paying the two or three that it costs you to use this. It really depends on the sort of units that you want to reserve in general. I think that this could certainly win out for certain armies, particularly things like the Eldar Webway. If an Eldari player wanted to put a whole load of units in reserve, then it likely might be better to use strategic reserves than that. Rather than paying one or three command points per unit, one command point might actually buy them several units in reserve. It could certainly be fun for an Imperial Guard player as well, to bring on something like three infantry squads or two with a company commander, even if they're not Talon, and have them march in in rapid fire range as a bit of a flanking force. Certainly not a bad option for one command point in my opinion. Aside from the obvious command point cost, I'd say the biggest weakness of this is that it might be a little bit easy to screen out for certain armies, if you are playing a horde or just something with good build control. If you do put units in strategic reserve, then it could be relatively easy for the enemy to push those units back quite a long way towards your deployment zone. It only takes a couple of units of chaff strung along on their board edges, and it means that you just won't be able to deploy within 9 inches of them. So I'd certainly bear that sort of thing in mind if you do happen to be facing an army with a ton of models in. If they're able to force you all the way back to your deployment zone, it might just have been better to start on the board.
So overall, I think this is a really interesting change to the game, and I quite like the way it gives you a different tactical option if you should want to hold forces back to commit them later. But it will certainly be a trade-off, as you're going to have to think about whether you want to commit the command points to this, other than other powerful options. Overall, I really like it. I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments, particularly if there's any other combos or implications that I might have missed. I'm sure there's tons throughout the whole game. Maybe we'll have a video talking about what sort of armies could make good use out of this at a later date. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we'll be continuing to cover the various different changes in 9th edition, as well as taking a full look at the whole thing once it's there. If you've been enjoying the channel, I'd just like to mention that I do have an Element Games affiliate link down in the video description below. If you live in the UK, then this can be a way to support the channel if you were thinking about buying in some model soldiers on the internet at some point. Element stocks the entire 40k range, it gives 10-20% discounts off, and if you order through them after clicking the link, then it doesn't cost you any extra, but a little bit goes to Allspets Tactics. There's also a similar Amazon link for the USA and Canada that works on basically any Amazon products whatsoever, and again they pretty much stock the entire 40k range. If you give the link a click, then any purchases within the next 24 hours, again a small amount goes to support the channel without costing you any more. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.